All righty. Got my microphone here. Used it for um, the combined readings we I did with Haley, and I was like, "Wow, it just sounds it just sounds really bad. Uh, you know, it sounds really good." Um, so we'll see if I continue to use the only disadvantage is, is I usually use like just the microphone in, in these, which allows me to walk around, which I like to do. Uh, I kind of like to have that freedom, but I think I can literally go between them. Let's see. Let's see if I can switch midway through. Now, test, test, test. Test, 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 test. Yes, this is good. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's get started then. Yeah, the microphone sounds way better. So we'll stick with that. So let me um, get this pulled up. Um, okay, so let me restart my program. There we are. Perfect. All right, so I think I'm going to go with uh, my video so I can share. I like to do this thing where I turn the video off. I just show the chart for a little bit. I, I'm, I'm a random guy. You know how I think. I, I just go with the flow, what I'm feeling. Um, whatever will produce the best reading and then I'm in. Sometimes it's like full, just me on camera. Sometimes it's 50-50, sometimes it's, um, you know, majority like this. Um, I just let it flow. Anyways, um, So the internet should be okay. So um, oh, I uh, I've I've been seeing charts like this lately with the uh, the nodes on on angles. Um, <clears throat> oof, so um, you've got south node on the ascendant conjunct Pluto. Um, which means that the south node ruler is conjunct the south node, and the uh, north node in Taurus conjunct the ascendant in Taurus, uh, ruled by Venus in the twelfth house. Okay, in Aries, and you're also Aries Sun born. A few days after me on the 18th of March, the 22nd, or right after the, the spring equinox. And your moon is at 15 Leo. 
Get that Sag Mars conjunct Uranus. Love that. Retrograde Mercury in Pisces. So interesting with Jupiter in that house too. And is there any aspects? Square. Uranus, the sun is square. Neptune. Okay. So it's fifteen degrees. I'm looking for something. So yeah, anyone that has Pluto conjunct the, the you know, the South Node, um, that's big time. Um, there's a huge karmic signature. Um, and because it's Scorpio, you know, there's this big unconscious um, kind of focus on, I guess, the deeper self. Um, and a lot of the circumstances it it's it's very like um like like a lot of 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 the past life trauma shows up um in the seventh house in relation in in relationships uh in this life that are very karmic by nature you have all like so many placements of like having extremely karmic uh partnerships you know, the ruler of, you know, your Venus is in 12th already. And this is a very karmic chart, just like by itself. I mean, having a 12th house sun, the nodes on the ascendant and ascendant. So, yeah. And then with squares, there's none. Um, but basically... It's like, um, how do I explain this? So, um, it's basically really, I, I don't want to call it like a replay, but You, you know, taking on a karma like this is very difficult, right? Um, and I'm looking to see, because I was like, I bet you she doesn't have any personal plants in Earth. You do not. So one indicator for me of an advanced soul is someone who doesn't have any supportive energy besides, I, I guess, it's, yeah, I mean, your ascendance there, so that kind of pushes that away, but still, you know, there's the ascendant. That's the only earth you have. Um, and basically Pluto conjunct the South, the South node. Um, yeah, there's a lot of reliving the karmic past. Um, and there's also a high upside where there's like the potential for lots of uh, prior life gifts or abilities, you know, to be like, you have like the, the real potential for like channeling uh, um, and refining kind of Latin latent abilities, you know, that you might have around being like a healer Scorpio, right? Like the mystic and all that. Um, but also
there can be some kind of you know block um some kind of past life trauma right with scorpio and you know having your south node conjunct the descendant which is and and, and pluto it's like your darkness is met in relationships and um and um the relationships are very karmic in nature however so 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 like a lot of like what comes up in partnerships gives you the keys to unlock what's ultimately you know really really the the key kind of karmic healing soul healing that's needed if there's any kind of tendency cycle trend um so an example might be someone who you know let's say that they're like a a doctor and they, they, they get or like some kind of healer and, and they get called to do that on more of a collective level um so like maybe like for them like some kind of sacrifice maybe for them um they wanted some you know different form of self-expression um but because of these gifts they have they're they're called to to really step up for others and they they you know people with this can can feel um a real sense of restriction in their life no matter what they do um but it's very good for manifesting also like it's very magical um but really you know it, it, it it's it's we have to like kind of dig deep to like like there, there's definitely like with pluto you know it's a gift but then there's also a, a, you know a restriction um brought forward from the current past right and there's just a lot from past lives that are playing out in your current life like expect 12th house sun is kind of saying that like a lot of the purpose of this life is to undo or to to kind of continue i would say a mission and you know basically we'll get into that right um so yeah you but usually yeah it's like a mixture of past abilities and and wisdom and knowledge with also some you know very critical restrictions and blockages and whatnot so um you know the at the end of the day you know whether it's the more positive or negative side of that that comes out um the thing that ne that that never changes is the repetition of past circumstances right um which you know will feel restrictive on a soul level regardless um and it's one of the most powerful signatures in all the astrology of karmic um repetition like pluto conjunct south node right um i also want to add to that that because it's in scorpio it takes on even more meaning and it is um you know and i know i'm starting with like the very deep karmic stuff but uh I'll, I'll make my way around. Don't worry. Um, the fact that, you know, cause the South node is, is, well, actually I purposely like make sure to not know anything about clients before. So, you know, the South node, this, you know, that that's your karmic tendency, right? That, 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 that's at least in with the karma you're dealing with in this life, that's kind of the been there, done that. Right. Um, so Scorpio people with South Nodes in conjunct Pluto 
I've been getting some people with this. It's very rare. And lately I've been getting them. And this happens to me a lot. It's kind of magical about being about doing what I do. I don't know if other astrologers have this, but for me, I tend to attract and it's just, and it's also just so weird because I'm going to be honest with you. Your reading was not next. I chose, I, I chose your reading. Um, because or you're like i looked at my list and i took yours because simply everyone in front of you uh required me to go into my notes um like it was like something it said something like you know read square you know read uh instagram conversation revise this and i had already started recording you know and i just and to be honest i just didn't feel like doing that i just really wanted to start the reading it's already late enough well, it's 120, but still. So, um, yeah, in essence, um, the Scorpio person, the Scorpio um, individual, um, South Node, with the North Node in Taurus, is here to try to find peace. And there's usually some type of, like, trauma that happens, Right. Now, because it's in the house of relationships, there could have been some type of like big difficulty. Um, there could have been, you know, what's the word? We get lied to. Um, right. We get um, betrayal. Yeah, betrayal. There could be like definite like trust issues that can come from the karmic past. Um, and, you know, with the eighth house Saturn also, that can make it really hard to trust people. Uh, well, in terms of like vulnerability, you know, to really like um, trust people in, in that sense. So it's interesting too, because then you have Mars and Uranus there in Sag, right? So it sort of pulls you towards this, um, this transformation. Right, which is like um that's what Scorpio is all about, death rebirth transformation. And it's in this part of your chart, Mars in the eighth house and Sag is someone who has a real firepower towards um towards getting deeper into human psychology, into anything that's hidden, the occult, esoteric, uh, death, you know, studies of life after death, really wanting to know, but also like really like um, there, there's usually a drive with 8th house Mars to really get deep within themselves. So, yeah. Now, um, the moon has no hard aspects aside from if you count Pluto and then squaring at 15 to 6, that's not, you know, it's nine degrees away. And uh, because to me, Pluto, because the nodes are involved, um, Yeah, well, nodes are definitely not part of it. It kind of, you know, it, it would make a lot of sense if you had potentially, you know, an early nurturing that didn't meet your needs or where there was some type of like trauma early on. But because that's like a very far moon square Pluto. I can't really make that claim. We'll have to talk. Oh no, we don't. I don't think we have. If if you get if you get a follow up and do you know what most people do, which is get the fall if they just get the reading, they end up getting the follow up and the current astrology, and I give like a big discount instead of like five thirty, do it for three eighty. Um, so you just have to let me know, and then we set we set a date and we we meet on Zoom. 
and it's uh a long i mean you know it's like first hour or so is uh all about the chart the nail chart and then after that it's all about current astrology yeah current astrology slash spiritual alignment is the name i give it because it gets deeper than just astrology but um a lot of early life dynamics um, can get projected into relation into into romantic relationships. Um, and you know, really in reality, like partnerships, you know, it's not just romantic, it's you know, just one close one on one partnerships right that is the key right that's like what gives you um an idea your unconscious reactions in that area of life is very linked to the past and the love and the the partners and when i think of seventh house it's also enemies op open enemies it's also like business partners. Personally, I consider BFFs like, um, I'd say it's more common for women. I mean, it definitely is, but I feel like some women are such best friends, right? Both single. And they're so close that it becomes like a seventh house relationship. It's not romantic, but you know, it's one-on-one -on -one. and some of the same things can come up. Right. But of course the seventh house, you know, is, 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 is often looked at as the love house or the main house of marriage and, you know, ruled by Libra relationships. But there's other, you know, the eighth house also is relationship oriented. Fifth house has to do with with, with that. There's a whole yeah. So anyways. Um so if if there was like a kind of like overly domineering mother and, and some 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 emotional trauma early on, um, it would have been done so in a way that perfectly mirrors um the karmic, the, the deep karmic pain that you're trying to overcome in this lifetime. So that's like the biggest thing so far is that like the trauma that you, that, that you feel. And I was just reading a beautiful article by Lada where she was writing about relationships and how sometimes like even our parents, um, if we have like, even if we have really bad relationships with our parents, sometimes they, volunteer out of love and sacrifice to play those roles for us in order for our souls to grow and it's just like wow you know so leo moons are sensitive especially a fourth house leo moon would have a, a deep attachment to home and to the past and to mother and you know when they when they get their their needs met you know when they feel seen where they feel special um it's good but when not um with that square you know there could be some real acting out and some real and and then so so really like the early nurturing is so key here i know it is for everyone but especially for you because like the goal is to is to with pluto is is uh, especially in this context, I wrote uh, uh, one of my best articles ever about this. And I spoke about how Pluto is really like our, it's like what I gave an example, right? It's like our cocoon, what were you, what, like of like the, the, the child who, the, the girl who grew up with uh, dysfunctional parents, parental relationship. So her idea of love, what was comfortable was that exact thing. And that's what she replicated in her, her adult relationships. Right. So Pluto represents that metaphor, metaf metaphorical, metaphorical girl, um, real, gaining that awareness, gaining that sometimes the thing that makes us feel 
comfortable um feels you know is actually like super toxic right and um it's through that awareness and then awareness is like a flashlight right in the dark it's like a map when you're lost you know you still haven't gotten there you still have to do the work but at least you you have an idea so relationships right off the bat karmic and you know that's gonna the the, the past lives uh, are definitely going to have had a major impact on you. Um, and I can recommend you someone if you're a, a psychic. Um, if you're, I don't know, I usually never mention mention it, but you have to private message me. But, I, you know, like I said, I, I recommend always doing the, unless it's something that's like a, a big financial burden, I always recommend doing the uh, follow-up and, current with me but uh yeah anyways she's 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 amazing too um or she's amazing um so i've had my eyes closed for like 10 minutes charts in my brain you just open them yeah so with the moon and the fourth and the sun and the twelfth, those are the sign, the houses, right? Like the 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 house sign of your Aries sun, and you, so you you have a uh, double fire, but it's in water houses. So it's like mix action with depth, and I think you being an Aries with a Taurus rising and Taurus North node. In this lifetime it'll be a moon is because you're meant to have some fun and you're meant to um to you know with north node and taurus in the first it's really about escaping also code codependent relationships that were very toxic like there's some kind of pattern that um you must have in relationships that comes from some type of trauma and goes along with that metaphoric example. So the key is, you know, Taurus North Node is learning to be happy alone. Not that not to be alone. Because at the end of the day, like I was saying, Pluto is like digging, it's it's it represents it's it's you know, it's Hades, it's representing the underworld. Um, so you're meant to go into the underworld. Um, and then as a the mythology says through the journey in the underworld only after everything has been overcome the treasure is found the gold is found and that gold is the healing so when i see taurus north node especially in a chart like this i know that this person this soul has been through it in this life they're trying to just feel grounded in their own skin. They're just trying to feel happy as an independent person where they don't need a relationship, right? Because when there are big issues, right, of codependency, there can be that tendency usually associated with Libra to cling on to um, people and to accept BS because even the BS is better than the fear of, you know, being alone. And, um, yeah, so it's interesting. The moon is kind of like, like, uh, just outside of the square zone. But to me, I, I would, I would still, you know, count, like count that like just barely. And, uh, it can make, you know, like your emotions, even though it's Leo, like have like a big taste of Scorpio, a little taste, you know, a taste of Scorpio, like, um, but it really depends on that. Usually it's that mother relationship. So um, if she was able to provide you with a lot of love, then that's beautiful. And, and you have lots of supporting aspects that would, you know, that would actually be good for that. 
But, um, you know, then there's a son in the 12th. Son is usually the father. 12th house son people usually have, you know, a father that passed, or passed early or just wasn't involved. You know, what wasn't, was either like, absent physically or metaphorically or psychologically something like that or just a weak a weak father a father who had a weak influence now of course sometimes the son is the mother and i've given up on trying to decide or i'm trying to say one one is 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 one but yeah um i think with 12th house sons like that's usually what it is it's usually you know, and then that could have created like a big, big attachment with the mother where maybe it's, you know, maybe it's, it's very much hard to kind of let go of things from the past. Um, but that's where your Sagittarius Mars comes in. And this is a huge part of your chart because it's conjunct Uranus, which is like genius energy. Right. And I mentioned how you're, you're trying to remove yourself from the shackles of the known toxic and move into being able to be a person who is independent, grounded, and relationships just are becoming something that is an extra to you. Like, it's not a necessity for your happiness. It's just something that, you know, if you have one, cool. Of course, everyone wants, you know, wants a relationship when they've been single for a while. And then when they're in a relationship, you know, they find reasons to complain. It's human nature. Right. Unless you follow my, my, uh, you know, the advice I put out in my Aquarian relationship post, which I'll write, probably write a book about one day, maybe not. <laughs> I say it all the time, but I, I don't know if I'll actually write a book about that. Um, but I'll talk about, you know, just having space in your relationships is so important, right? It's all about the sun because you are one with the zeitgeist, with the, with the uh, undercurrents of the world, you know, you you feel everything so deeply, even as uh, Aries, Leo, um, Leo, right? Because that's your domain. And to have all three water houses activated is speaking to those elements of the unconscious self playing a pivotal role in this lifetime with, with Pluto being so involved unconscious drives need to be understood that's why depth therapy or something you know things that, that get you get you deep get you to deep to your own unconscious this parts of your, of your behavior and your self that you're not aware of potentially right that's where the healing is the awareness and the work around that um but yeah like the taurus taurus is heaven on earth um at its highest so it's venus rule venus in 12th you know you have the chart of someone who should who could benefit so much if they uh if they you know basically sacrifice their life in some way for service not sacrifice is a big word but by being selfless and um really you know as an aries that's the sign you know of the leader right um and in the 12th house you know you could be someone you know it could be someone who who has both qualities of intuition and is in touch with the collective unconscious and also just very psychic in general or very very um intuitive in general but then also has some level of um of, of, of personal power and, and assertion now the thing though is that the 12th you know can be a dangerous place square mars and um neptune so it's square that sag um but you know ones but they're they're they're, they're all on fire though which to me makes the square a lot less powerful Besides the, but the, you know, the nep the, the the Uranus one is also, or the Neptune one is is very powerful, and it's in the ninth house, your Neptune, right? 
So the personal planets are the big three, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, and Venus, Mars, and Mercury, right? Those are the conscious parts of you. The outer planets are, um, Jupiter's kind of in the middle. Those are more karmic and what matters about them is less their sign. They, they have, they do have a function, but less, right? Um, it's where the, it's their house placement and the aspects they're making. So um, to have Neptune square sun in the 12th can make one a complete and utter demonstration of self-sabotage and cycles and not realizing and when it squares mars it can make the person have like issues around ego um and anger where they can especially in aries right so the stellium i mean having you know those planets in the 12th in aries can it can bring up issues um it can be that the house of of um you know of um repressed energies and with venus there you know ruling your north node it's through that deep dive into spirit into your spiritual journey which you know every human has their own spiritual journey you're not meant to follow you know you can listen to people, but you don't have to, you know, at the end of the day, it's what works for you, right? So with sun and Venus there in Aries, and Venus is doing what? Nothing bad. So um, it really is, you know, sun square Neptune um is really about yeah just like self disillusionment um and the person can go through cycles where they kind of run into the same types of um second the same types of experiences and hold on one sec all right i am back uh let's see back into my zone well i literally paused for like 15 seconds um so anyways like venus is conjunct Eris also so there can be you know a real volcanic energy in 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 love and in, in relationships and um it can create someone who likes to be alone and who who you know, likes to, to 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 go after certain types, but when they get them, sometimes they these scenarios can be a little bit like um hard to understand because they'll like go after someone, you know, female or male, get them and then like want independence when they have them. Um but it can definitely create lots of like yeah self sabotage around love, but also just lots of unfinished karmic business with different partners. Um, so, but the sun there, you know, it, it really, it, you know, the, 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 the cure for all 12th house people is to understand that, like I said, selfless, selfless work, um, is, is the key. It, it really, it, 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 it undoes the difficult karma, um, especially if the work is in one of these very, you know, these areas of talent, right? You have all this, this, this fire and the, in the, in that, you know, with the Scorpio South node, that's the past life mystic also. Perhaps you were a witch that was, you know, crucified or something like that. Um, 
but I get a lot of like, yeah, like the relationship stuff and how that has to be resolved. And then that, so the reason that you're an Aries Leo in this life is because those are two signs that are very much about action, fire signs. Um, Aries is the first sign. So it, you know, represents a new beginning. And you know, having sun and, and, and moon in the same element, it's like having your yin yang, your two captains to the ship that is you going in the same direction, agreeing about which way to go, right? But there is definitely a potential for I you know, even as an Aries with that Neptune square for, you know, identity crisis and, and really having issues uh, like with like, who am I, you know, who do I want to be? Got to watch out for addiction too. And just any kind of escapism. But also, the sun square Neptune person could be a guru, it can be a spiritual teacher, a spiritual legend. Uh, you know, it can be someone who takes the higher energies of those two and is extremely compassionate warrior for for truth and for for a you know for a cause that they true that they fight for as an Aries, right? Because they recognize with all this this intuition, what's wrong. And the fire can give them the ability to go through it. And being a Leo moon, it's fixed fire. So it's like you're able to start, you know, it's fun energy too. Leo moon is able to, especially when it's, uh, you know, shrining both Uranus and Neptune. Especially Uranus, right? I meant to say Saturn and Uranus. Um. Like Esther, it's kind of like smack in the middle because Saturn's basically is on is on Antares too. Well, wow. it's basically ten. Uranus is base is twenty two, and the sun the moon's basically sixteen. So it's it's almost like uh, and Juno's right there. So it's like there's an inter interesting pattern where the moon, the midpoint of um of Saturn and Uranus is Juno. And then the moon lands on that midpoint. So it's like these two, the middle is like basically right here. And then uh, this is 1557. It trines that, that, that position. So what does that mean? Well, Uranus and Saturn are two conflicting energies. One wants liberation in the eighth house and it wants you know excite you know excitement in that domain and it gives intuitive downloads and flashes and it's the psychic the, the mystic and the person who who has access to all you know to who, it's it's a, it's nice to have uranus in, in water houses um but saturn until your saturn turn around 29 and a half it could have made you really, really afraid. There could have been some very deep unconscious fears, probably from the past life stuff, right? Um, often it's fear of intimacy. The eighth house is very related to sex, right? Getting close, very, very truly close to someone. Um, shy in that department, potentially, right? So the Saturn there can also financially it can it can push back uh inheritances or you know anything related to money from other sources besides yourself until after the return and you have Chiron on the second and black Lilith on the second also so there is some karma around money we'll see what the stars say about that six stars asteroids but you know the key is to align yourself with um, spiritual values and find the balance between um, spiritual and material to not you know because like at the end of the day Taurus is about security so that also counts as financial um, 
but really it's it it speaks to that second house chiron which oftentimes does not feel good in their own skin now this is the amount of my clients that have chiron and gemini is, is is incredible right and the reason is that they're often people who are actually extremely extremely intelligent and extremely this is a very interesting part of your chart you know they're they're just very misunderstood so growing up and because they're young, they maybe get put on some medication. I don't even know. Like they, 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 they get inside their head the idea that their way of thinking or that they're not smart, that there's something flawed with their thinking. But yo, you have Mercury and Pisces retrograde. So Mercury and Pisces, I have that, but mine's different. It's direct and it's part of a Kazemi, so I kind of don't have it. Um, Kazemi... Don't worry about what that means, but I basically don't have it. Um, but I am a Pisces sun. And what it's doing, you know, you have you you also have Jupiter there, which is really, really good for that's that's great for money too, to have Jupiter in the eleventh. Um and it's great for you know, these larger than life goals that take like like a, you know, a lifetime to complete. Like like a lot of times it's like people with that, like they they really, you know, with your midheaven in in the can in Capricorn, like you know, they. It really takes them until later in life, or after like different phases, right? You know, which is the eighth house is about phases. You have Mars there, right? So I have to get back to my point of what I was saying before, but I'll, I'll kind of make a little detour with the money stuff. Is that is that you know with the Gemini, or with the Mercury stuff? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll circle back around to, to the Mercury, but basically um, Pisces Mercury is like amazing. It's like you're extremely artistic and right-brained. Um, but with like the more like, you could be like a brilliant artist or, you know, or or like high philosophical abstract concepts just make sense to you uh, ahead of your time and thinking. And it squares Uranus, of course. So that that's that I was I was I was I I I opened my eyes to see if it tried Uranus, but it squared it. So we'll talk about that in a sec. Let me finish where I was with this. So basically, um, you know, this eighth house is about um it's 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 really about vulnerability and letting go and surrender. And that's what the that ultimately that's what you're meant to do in this lifetime is you're meant to surrender and, and, and just kind of do the shadow work that's necessary. And, um, you know, with this training your Juno, first of all, that speaks once again to how these very karmic partners are going to help you in this way. Right. I believe I would take, I would take a guess that, there would be one or more than one karmic partners who are specifically aligned in this lifetime uh, by their energies and by who they are to you karmically to help you get past um, this thing, this Pluto energy, South and Scorpio that we talked about. Um, now, With that whole midpoint, yeah, you're, I mean, Uranus, eighth house, like like I said, likes to be free. There's an intuition. It's it's very, very psychic and all that. Um, but Saturn, it pull, it, it kind of, it's kind of like real push and pull. So when the moon kind of hits that midpoint, Juno, that Juno represents like the marriage partner, represents like that, that, you know, that perfect partner for you. And the fact that the moon trines it, it's like kind of showing how, you know, maybe it's some, you know, you, you'd be very good if you're not married already with someone foreign um, or someone who just is very philosophical themselves. And that a lot of the issues around vulnerability and around sexuality and around um, allowing yourself to be seen can be um and feel seen right the moon can be um worked through with the right partner 
But then the question is, what, what is the right partner? We'll talk about that a little later. Um, but yeah, like definitely at least one clue is is someone who's expansive and who adds to your worldview, right? Who adds to your idea of truth and and um, could be from a different culture, could be from the same culture. Um, but yeah. So with Mars in the eighth, which would be, you know, like the co-ruler, I guess, of, of your south node, um, as Scorpio is ruled by Pluto, but also Mars, you know, one can make one can make the case that um, one can make the case that another big part of the resolution of this is through your own personal journeys within and without. Let me explain this. Sagittarius is the eight, ninth house in the zodiacal story, Scorpio eight, Sag nine. So the journey is that in the seventh house, right, right here, that's where you encounter your, your darkness, right? That's where you personally, like you encounter like this real, this tendency, right. That comes out in relationships and it, it you know, it's connected to past lives and, you know, you're trying to shake it. And then the eighth house represents the work that needs to be done internally, the shadow work, right? The kind of union, like dark night of the soul, death, rebirth, transformation. So the planet's falling in there and it's in Sagittarius. So it's ruled by Jupiter, which would make it very expansive. But then Jupiter um, or Saturn being in there can, yeah, it could have really taken tell post Saturn return, which I see, you know, you're out of now, you've been out of for, for years to really come into your own as this mystic, right? Maybe like, you know, you always had it inside you, but you repressed it because of the 12th house being the house to repress energies. And it's very, there's a high potential that you could have been someone who maybe didn't have it so easy growing up and decided to kind of like blend your personality to fit in better. So with um with Mars in Sag, you know, you're meant to travel. You're you you're meant to have this major push towards traveling physically and traveling metaphor or tra like and or physically or metaphorically. Right now you're traveling you're traveling metaphorically as an example, right? You're it's reading, it's increasing your awareness, right? Um I hope it is. And so, yeah, but the fact that's in the eighth house is like, I think that being in different cultures uh, would be something or just like trying on different philosophies and all that would be kind of like a, a real, it would, it would really push you into the, the areas of healing that you need the most. Um, also your Mars falls on the galactic center so you are literally like a magnet that attracts cosmic information and you have all of these I think of them as muscles right um, the more that you start to kind of identify and claim these gifts, which is also goes back to what I was saying earlier about the Pluto South node, the more you're able to use them to your advantage and benefit from them. So, um, So basically, after yeah, so like you know the seventh house, you know it's 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 encounter with other. The darkness is shown. It's taking responsibility and seeing your part in that. Then the shadow work is the allowing parts of yourself 
people, places, events, hobbies, the past also, whatever it is that's no longer serving you, allowing it to just die. So there's new space in your life. And with, you know, the eighth house like this, you know, this will be a theme of different mega chapters. But with Mars there, you will be someone who goes towards this type of information uh, and wisdom. Wisdom. Because the ninth house, Sagittarius, is about the physical expansion of truth and of the need to find Mars and Sag. People, they go towards wisdom. They go towards truth. Right? That's their trajectory be the gypsy that turns into the teacher that turns into the philosopher metaphorically speaking of course now mars conjunct uranus is a very interesting placement there's a lot of genius energy there but it's not the typical energy by society standards and when you combine that with your mercury in pisces mercury is the brain is the mind pisces is is a sign that that that's like i said very abstract very right-brained and the retrograde would, would make it even more so. You could be very shy. Leo moons don't like being shy. They want so, but so, so it could just be that you're not shy around people you know. The Aries aren't shy either. That's the thing. That's what's so interesting about your chart. So you might not even be shy. You might just um, over, you know, and this step does get better probably past Saturn, um, Saturn return also, you know, into your adult years, but growing up, there can be lots of ruminating, lots of overthinking and lots of shame and take, taking on emotions that are not yours. And with the square to Uranus, right, from your eighth house, you're a channel. You are 1000% a channel who gets downloads. I don't say this every reading. You can watch the readings I put on my YouTube and Watch them all. Tell me how many times I say this because it's not like I'm just saying it, saying it, saying it. So, um, you know, Mars and Uranus, at this point, we're talking about someone who, or excuse me, Mercury and Uranus, someone who was a very ahead of their time growing up, but maybe even their own parents, who may, maybe your parents had a good relationship because your sun and moon are in both the same element. But that's not always foolproof, but could be. But um, you know, the main one being your your, your the sun with net with Neptune, you know. In Placidus, maybe that would fall into the into into the eleventh, but it'd be limit, limit, limit. So overall, you know, um Overall, the Chiron wound in Gemini is around thinking you're you know you're intelligent because Mercury square Uranus would make you want to talk about aliens and make you want to talk about uh, you know make you interested in it and it can be hard to focus for a kid <laughs> growing up with Mercury at your grade school, you know, um, they can be super intelligent, gifted, but just like. The way the like the system is set up is way more Capricornian, and they do better maybe with more abstract, uh, more artistic stuff, more um. And and then when it comes to relationships and just like life in general, they can be they can have a tendency to overthink things, um. But that's because in a past life or in past lives, they have um either under or over used some element of that mercury of the, of the, of the mind has been used in the right way or wrong way or over or under now with your nodal axis. Um, I think that it in the fact that it actually, you know, is well, Jupiter trends the, the, the South node, the nodes and the ascendant. So that's also speaking to how much luck you're going to have. Um, with your partners in this life, not all of them, but they will definitely be need to be people who can expand you and 
I'm not saying they have to be spiritual people, but they definitely, you know, spiritual to me is just someone who is self-reflective. Like, you know, it doesn't have to be following astrology or this or that. Um, someone who takes responsibility for their shit and who's actually interested in growing as a human, right? Everything is spiritual. So, um, yeah, like Uranus, uh, it can, Mercury square, you know, it can, it can be in the, yeah, it can, it can just like, uh, make that person feel like they need to shut up, you know? So a big part of your healing is refining that throat chakra and that voice and understand that your talents might just be very, very unique and um, also hidden in, in karmic and maybe found through meditation or found through, and this is why it's such an important plan in your chart, Mars and Sagittarius, through just trial and error and this continual search for truth for what is the real, you know, for, for higher wisdom and higher truth. That is just so important. But the moon and Leo person, you know, they, they on a high vibration, they have that inner child within them. So it's like through all the trials and tribulations, you keep that smile, you keep laughing, you know? Um, and having creative outlets is like one of the best potentials for you. You know, you have Venus uh, trying Neptune, uh, Uranus, right? So that, Right there, um, well, we'll talk about that later. But on an artistic level, it gives someone just like major creativity, where they can tap into like, they can tap into like the energy of the collective, and then through whatever artistic outlet they might have, just do something profound with it. And you know, having Mars conjunct. Neptune is another warning for the substances and for escapism, but also it can be, you know, that, that, that person who's a real warrior for what they believe in, because after that, that, you know, eight, eight, nine with nine Sagittarius, 10 is Capricorn, which is, you know, your, your midheaven, your Dharma, where your, your Neptune's in the ninth house, your midheaven's in the ninth house. So your Dharma is really a long learning. It's a, it's a long, you know, Neptune, the ninth house people, they're usually deeply spiritual people. Um, they align themselves, their belief system is, is very spiritual as opposed to like religious typically, right? And it's a galactic center Mars, you know, you you have these antennas, you know, and that's another thing with that Mercury. And that's why the service work or the work being of service to others unlocks these energies because you feel the compassion, you, you get to work in an area where you're 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 feeling other people's pain, you're, you're you're understanding it's it's healing you, healing others heals you. And um at the same time, if that's impossible or not in the cards per se, um, you know, it's just like there's always little things you can do, you know. I understand some people are, you know, have to work you know, jobs, they have bills to pay, they have kids, all that stuff, you know, I get it, you know, I mean, I'm an adult as well, right, I don't have kids, but I'm an adult, um, so, yeah, it's fascinating, um, and the wound could be very deep to where it affects the sense of self and what the self values, so, um, and then Black Moon Lilith being there too in Gemini, there can be, yeah, a deep fear of 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 kind of um being forgotten and kind of um you know when you talk about black and Lilith, I think about the high like like how it can be your worst the worst part of you, but also the healing and in Gemini could be lying, you know, through speech. And I, I spoke about potentially like, you know, not wanting to reveal your true self because of feeling like it would make you weird. Right. But that's where the, 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 the real healing is, is to really allow your authentic self to, to just shine and go because then you have, you, you, you know, then relationships are created that are more based on authenticity. 
but you know 12th house sun people like they can be working behind the scenes they usually prefer it doctors um you know surgeons uh even politicians like you know you know uh, anything in like the healing pro- healing profession psychologists um working at any kind of like um center like disabled people or anything like that right I still I've had my eyes closed and this is like magical. This is my new thing. Um but there's so many gifts. You know, just the moon trining, um, you know, this whole block by itself is just, like, amazing. Um, and then it trines uh, Venus. So you have a grand trine, what it's called, right? Venus, moon, and uh, I guess it would be Saturn. Or here it is, whatever one you want to pick. But um, the closest would be well, 16. And 16. It's like basically the same, right? But let's call it Uranus because I think it might be a little bit closer, but barely. It's very marginal. So that Grand Trine is a talent. And when it's Moon and Venus and Uranus, that is a psychic as fuck. Grand, like, just Moon is intuition already. Venus and Moon is just an amazing trying to have. It makes uh makes me think that the relationship with the mother is quite good. And then to have it, you know, trying Saturn and Uranus, and that connects as a grand trine. You know, the thing about grand trines is that you you can't overlook them. They can be overlooked easily as talents. You know, it's karmic talents you develop through past lives. So they can be overlooked very easily, right? To where um to where you take it for granted. But man, I mean that combination of planets like is like it's the ability like through like let's say meditation and dreams to just get like quick hits downloads you know and that's so rare that's like so amazing to have that so journaling is so important that's also one way through writing or through speaking and communicating in some way that you do the deepest healing and you heal that that chiron gemini wound and because also you have that mercury and pisces retrograde you are connected to the other side that's what mercury and pisces is right it's like a channel but the question is, you know, with that Venus being in the 12th, is there part, you know, is that something in you that you've shut down when you're young? Is there a repressed energy there? But overall, you know, like, it's going to make the person very, uh, you know, okay with change and okay with, uh, with being different, you know? So like, even though the Mercury squares Uranus, um, the moon trines it, um, so the moon trines it and That's like some real ahead of your time. And it can be hard, like energy where it can be hard to like know what to do with it. 
And maybe early on it was just too much to handle and, and, and just kind of came out wrong and people maybe labeled you a weirdo or just feeling misunderstood, all that. So, yeah, but um, like I said, all hard aspects are meant to be overcome. And um, so with the retrograde, you know, you like, like with the karmic story I'm seeing now, um, Let me see one thing. I think, yeah, you've allowed relations. Yeah, you 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 haven't spoken enough, spoken up enough. Um, and the relationships have have kind of taken you away from your spiritual gifts and journey. That's so. That's something that is so massive, so massive that it's taken lifetimes of most likely failing this aspect of the karmic journey. Um, I don't like to use that word, but, you know, karmic repeat, right? And, and not the whole thing, but this aspect. So that means that there's a lot of resistance, but that also means that the soul is so advanced that they're taking on such a hard part of their personal karma in this lifetime but it's not all yeah i mean like the more you can get in touch with the you know the unconscious forces and anything mystical the better and man would i be so grateful if you booked this uh a follow-up uh and in, in, in current because i'm just so curious of how how you are um Okay. And um yeah, so there's always this kind of battle with Jupiter square Saturn between um responsibility and expansion. Responsibility, expansion, holding yourself back, going higher, taking a risk, not taking a risk. So that's a big one that has to get figured out, right? How to balance that out. Aries Sun, though, you're you know, you're 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 here to to be a leader in some type of way, right? Even if it's 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 a very different, I don't see many 12th house Aries Suns. But you know, most definitely your the mission is very, very important. And um, even if if it did fall into in, into the 11th in like classes or something. Um, you know, it would just speak even more to that collectivist kind of um love of humanity and just more to that that desire to to change the world in some way and to 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 have some kind of over you know bearing uh, very like some kind of like you know major life purpose that really assists in that. Moonshine Pluto is nice because it gives one a sense of uh of emotional security, I think. Um and kind of like it it definitely will make one more more grounded. So like the one the the trying with Uranus can can kind of be a little bit more held in check. Um, it just speaks to this other theme of like, you know, back and forth is of, of 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 kind of like <laughs> crazy movement forward and then being pulled back. 
But like ultimately, this is a huge part of your chart that I'm getting to you about to say right now is that by having there could be frust- so much frustration to be an Aries Leo, like of all signs, right? in the water houses because so much of your life is related to your free will and or to fate excuse me and it can be so frustrating for people who have that because they want to you know control things and have things work out in their way mind over matter but then they just get met with that same kind of like shit and with the neptune square like i said there can be that cycle of and, and 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 identity issues like who am i you know and if you don't go deeper it can lead to real escape you know you know potential issues with escapism or just not feel or meaninglessness you know so this is the real karmic push to go deeper and deeper and deeper so with the relationships you know first of all like the moon in in leo needs someone that's that's going to be fun fourth house you know there's probably an emotional need for for family and to you know start a family so i i, I would assume that you would want someone like that uh series and virgo also in the fifth house would speak to like feeling very nurtured by that kind of like leo creative fun inner child energy where you can kind of be like your silly self all all the time and part of fortune in the fifth you know it's speaking also series in part fourth and the fifth, like in Virgo, it's like you're create when you're in your creative bag, like per se, when you're in your creative self, when you're fully in your creative genius and letting go of societal societal standards of you, that's when you are in your biggest flow state. And vertex in the sixth in Libra makes it I'm not surprised at all because that's your doorway to higher awareness. And it's through very balanced and, and diplomatic and fair relationships that you see that. This is one of the one things I don't want to stand up. So I'm going to switch. I guess you'll see your face for a second. My eyes have been closed. I have like these I'm just like I'm really like this. I like peek them up into the chart. Okay. Uh the shade. Whew. Wow. This has been like a it almost feels like I've been like in a dreamland. Um okay, so now let's test again just Test, test, test. Yes, 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 you hear me well. The quality's still good on these. Sometimes you need to stand up. Move around. Move your body. Um. Yeah, so, I mean, like, I love like like you have so much psychic energy, so much intuitive energy. It's like ridiculous, you know. Um, and I really just I pray like just not you know I I pray that you found that and that you weren't. I mean like like that you that you feel that you feel what I'm saying and that like that Aries in you is like understanding that like you know anything that could have been labeled as like weird or whatever is truly a Okay, I just lost connection because I have to use my hotspot. Still, in June, February for these readings. Uh, okay, share screen. So yeah, I was just saying like that. Yeah, it's just like a. It's very very special. It's not like everyone you know has like these placements of twenty nine Vesta and Aquarius. You know that's tenth house. Very very deep commitment to humanity and to, to working, um, you know, you, you very, like you, you understand the sacredness of, of humanitarianism and of, uh, of, of your role, you know, the role, the Dharma you have is, is a very important mission this lifetime. So with the Jupiter 
and Mercury there in the, in that in that eleventh, and you know perhaps it it you know isn't like so quick that you are discovering the gifts of a Mercury retrograde in Pisces, right? Um, during retrograde times, right, you'll feel very good, and things will make more sense while everyone else is in more of a state of confusion. That's kind of how it is for uh, that placement. Pretty cool. Um, but yeah, there can definitely be um, confusion just overall. So um, just spending time alone is really, really important for you because you can be engulfed by other people's energy, which going back to the love stuff, uh, you know, it's it's mega important. Like like I said, like vertex in the sixth. Um, you know, for you, you know, your that that I, vertex is like your doorway to higher awareness, right? So for you, it's through service. Um, it's through relationships, Libra, right? Like like the right type of relationships. Um, you know, your descendant is is having such good aspect. You know, um, it's sextile um, Neptune, it's trine Jupiter, which is that that luck. So you can have like very deeply spiritual relationships. Um, there really isn't one like series sextiles that you have. You know, all the asteroids that you know are 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 making impact on it. So yeah, um, that's cool. So, um, you know, being like the more balanced you can become, the more you can lean into that Taurus, like consistency and reliability, Feel, you know, kind of being the same person day after day, the better, right? The better for you and um, the more growth. So, um having a routine that hits the physical, emotional, spiritual, everything all. And a day by day where your work really reflects, like I said, mid heaven in Capricorn with, with Neptune there, you know, where you're truly learning, you know, maybe compassion, but also like Capricorn mid heavens, you know, they do want to have success. So my, my mid heavens in Taurus, right? So it's like, um, I'm an astrologer, right? So, um, it's really how you're seen by masses, you know? And Capricorn, you know, you'll be seen very, uh, like, a, a, like authority, right? A real authority. And, um, yeah, so the, the, the really, you know, high vibe Libra, right? Which is balanced, diplomatic, where you're having good communication, Everything's fair, peaceful, loving. Not nothing in life is perfect. Everything perfect, you know, too good to be true, right? Isn't real, but still. And yeah, then the whole seventh house, we talked about that, right? It's just like um the importance of of overcoming that karmic tendency, whatever it is. You know, and Pluto seventh, right, is like is is the yeah, like you're confronting that 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 depth that real pain that potential betrayal or whatever it is or just past life trauma in relationships right so i think that yeah the partnership like having mars and you know leo moon like i said the playfulness and also like that that it's still that, that fairness that fun but like that fairness but also like six thousand you know or like eighth house is like that depth, right? And then being like a twelfth houser, you need someone who um can help move you towards that that north node, right? Um, th it's not about a sign or any combination of signs that doesn't that doesn't matter in astrology. Like I do compatibility readings, I love doing them, but any like a lot of I just shared this article that a lot of like is a beautiful article, like any. Any combination of signs, uh, like like even the worst composite in synastry, like can work. Nothing can't work. 
So, you know, that's that's nice. Um but yeah, you know, you're gonna want your career to really reflect um like you're gonna really want a a, a Dharma, a like a career like I hate no, no not a career. I I, I just like the strongest like when I when I say that. Uh you know, your your outer life mission is really meant to uh to bring you lots of uh um wisdom and compassion um which in service like would be ideal being of service in some way where you're making the world a better place through your you're contributing in that sense right that is what your soul is yearning for with this chart that's the chart is a chart that's asking to do to like you know to help and to 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 learn something that because Capricorn likes to to be respected but to be useful also is midheaven and the Saturn ruled midheaven it's the boss it's, you know and of course Saturn being in the eighth it's the people you know someone who can help lead people through trans you know their transformations and also eighth house Saturn one thing I didn't talk about is that um it can make someone live a very long life. Um, it can literally extend life. And Mars and Uranus together, which I didn't really talk about, also is one is a very dynamic, ingenious aspect, right? Um, and what it does is, uh, I mean, it it's it can be a little bit, a little bit provocative, um, but yeah, it's a complete rebel. Right, the complete rebel doesn't give a shit about like anything that society tells them to do, and um, really, really uh, creative too, and very sexual, like lots of sexual attract, like attractiveness typically, like like just energy, like the, an aura that brings that that kind of in, and yeah, it just like it gives a lot of energy. So like you are a high energy person, all that fire, but the thing is that um, because it's in those houses. You could you could make the it's not a mistake, but you have to be very wary of who you surround yourself with because being with all these energies, especially with with, with like your thoughts, right? You can take on thoughts that aren't yours. It's like it's literally like osmosis, the Mercury Pisces. But um, yeah, just like making sure that you have the the, the alone time you need um, is really important. Um. So, yeah, it kind of makes, like, the rebel who wants anything unusual kind of follows their rules. And so much, it's like an ex, a very volcanic explosion, right? Like, bursts of, like, this energy. Um, so, you know, having, like, a, it's very goal-directed. Goal mars right so the more you can focus on whatever your goal is the better um and you could become actually quite popular jupiter 11th house is very good for popularity even though there's all these other elements that, that point to like something maybe there's different phases where you 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 had social failure and social success i don't know but um it would be someone who would typically be um you know like be admired for being for how different they are but then also have some like nasty critics because of it how controversial they are um so having saturn um saturn conjunct uh the royal star antares um is very interesting let me see what else Yeah. So one other thing before I go into that is like the more that you can become in your body yoga you know like um, just meditation things like that like this is like the best right this is the best but um, to make sure that you're not lying to yourself also is very important so um 
Yeah. Um, okay. So when they tarry and Saturn and Well, one thing about Saturn in the eighth by itself is that it can give someone a very serious approach after the Saturn return and different fears are overcome. Um, towards like studying the occult, the esoteric, and all that. And with that past life Scorpio energy, you can have this real obsessive like like when you go for it, you fucking go for it like a thousand percent, right? Um, but Saturn and Antares. Is can be a difficult one. It can make someone, you know, quite materialistic um, and sometimes dishonest. And um, there can be trouble through enemies. It's not the best um, placement, but... And then Saturn retrograde also is another indicator of... Uh, kind of reliving a lifetime or like like kind of a, a, a karmic do over. But then oh you're lucky. Yeah, it's so close. But then you have White Moon Selena conjunct Saturn too. So you're also kind of like you kind of have like some nice spiritual protection over that that part of you. So that's pretty cool. Um That's Vega. Uh, So another thing I found with uh, Saturn and Antares is uh, an internal conflict between good and evil. Interested in playing the sinner or saint, swing, swinging between polarities, black and white, often demonized or sanctified without any good reason. Easy to typecast. It says, example, the Chernobyl disaster, Oscar Pistorius, Lady Gaga. And there's a Pope Benedict. Interesting. Anyways, um, yeah. So basically, like we understand that this is this is really opened up for the last few years, and this is this is an area where, uh, within you know Sagittarius and Scorpio, like this is these are the, the signs ultimately. Um, one huge part and that, you know, you're, you're here to, you know, have your voice be heard. Right. And Leo moon is also really about that. So Leo moon, you know, speaking your emotions is such a healing thing for you. Um, so, um, you know, I'll go back to, I'll switch it to my face. I'm going to go back to the good microphone. Okay. I'm just afraid because like, I don't want it to like... Hello, hello? Hello, hello? Hmm. 
I just don't want to like switch back and forth and then suddenly it just stops working. But, um, you know, you have no air in your chart at all. So um, it's really important for you to do breath work and to really work hard at seeing other people's perspective. perspective. Um, communication could be something that's tricky for you and that you're here to really learn with the retrograde, you know. Uh, it pushes that that energy, the the thought energy more internally, um, and they're meant. It's because you're meant to like analyze how you want to come out, come across as a communicator and as a thinker, right? Um. But anyways, yeah. So like, uh, kind of rounding everything out. You know, you definitely also. Um you know, with, with, with the 11th Jupiter, it creates this kind of like ever widening circle of friends. I have this in Placidus and like, I, I always just like would move from one place to the other and just meet friends, you know, it was always really lucky. And also, yeah, like goals and visions, like I said, are very important in, in your search for meaning. Um, and you can be a very good leader and inspiring big groups of people and, and, and work really well in them. But the the thing with Mercury in there is that they should they should be spiritual groups or groups that are rooted in compassion, um, as you know the energy of 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 these groups you can get lost in that, right? And uh, Mercury Pisces people like sometimes yeah they need to really spend time alone twelfth house that's where like the deepest uh, you know energy comes from the deepest kind of realizations. So, yeah. So yeah, it's it's really those those moments of quiet reflection that that heal you, right? Emotional pain. Um, and, and and also connect you to the psychic world but like the fire can yeah can be very frustrating those water houses and, and there's that big need for surrender like i keep saying so um yeah as much as you need you, you know the perfect partner would be someone that is exciting at the end of the day you know it it's it's just someone that you can you know really rely on and who can really you know, I don't want to give a sign anything. Someone that doesn't, that doesn't like force you into anything, like like something health, like literally like healthy. I know that sounds the most like obvious thing ever. Healthy by what I what I would consider healthy works for you. And if you're like me, where you don't like want to share a bedroom, where you want to like live, you know. Um, very independent, but still in the same uh, house or apartment, but um, have your space, you know, partner has, has, has their space. Like, like that's cool too. You know, there's not just one, like the, like the traditional way doesn't work for everyone. Right. So, um, and yeah. And then this is all moving you towards, uh, you know, this, um, same with this. No, towards this uh, North Node on the Ascendant, right? Where you truly find yourself as an independent, um, as, as an independent person um, with an identity that's based on them, um, not submerging themselves into other people, right? So even in relationships, the key is to not fully submerge yourself into, um, you know, still be you and still be on your journey so there's that balance between you know self-assertion and giving to others that's also very important with that first seventh house um also yeah just like like overcoming like that karmic distrust of change right um and you know the karmic the karmic uh need for channeling like these intense emotions into whatever outlets right um whether it's work or creative so um 
yeah, and just healing healing the past life wounds of you. Know. So, yeah, just learning to really trust, surrender, and you know understand that like change, um, can bring like a a newfound sense of peace and stability that is you know maybe more than 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 than, than any you've ever experienced. Um. I think also 12th house Venus, like I might, I might, I'll add like um, people like to be just like, a, like almost like abandon themselves into, into the unknown. Right. Just like completely just like let go. Um, and it's very good for spirituality and, and it's like a flashlight of the esoteric. Um, but sometimes people like can be too future oriented with that and fail to like see like the beauty in the present. Um so, yeah. All right. Um, I want to see what it did. Open in my documents. So yeah, your Sappho conjunct Neptune is really, really good for um like it helps a lot in like the whole creative process and desire for romantic sexuality. I saw that. Okay, I see what it says. But where is the real one I'm looking for? Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. So, like, like I was saying earlier, like with the Gemini Black Moon, there's, 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 yeah, often like a fear of rejection, right? So, like I said, uh, there can be like that, that, that being terrified of other people's opinions, wanting to fit in, and um. You know, sometimes there can be even like rejecting other people before they have the chance to to um reject you um and yeah it's just like a, a struggle with defining your own individuality but um the more you can find you know your did i say origin, original originality individuality is what i meant to say uh, I, I think i said that yeah so it's yeah it's about being original also like um and sometimes like yeah just like making sure that 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 you're doing things because of you know of you not because of some some other in uh, you know influence um and just like not focusing on other people which i think that mars uranus really helps you with that and um always asking yourself you know like when you're doing anything like am i doing this for me or or even unconsciously is this for someone else's approval right so Besides that, um, there's also Palace in the third and Cancer. That's a really intelligent placement. Palace in the third, someone who just really wants to acquire knowledge, really good for communication skills, um, and just original ideas and very intuitive. Intuitive uh, Palace in a water sign, you know, uh, it's like the third eye is open, and you can uh, kind of rely on your your emotions and your intuition. Um, they kind of guide your um your thoughts right um and it also can make you a very great empathetic listener so yeah um and good for like keeping up relations with like your your family and having good communication with them so yeah and then um Yeah, the Leo moon just need like like needs 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 that you know it needs it needs love, but it also needs it needs to to have some fun. You know, you can't be with someone who's just like so serious all the time. You know, 
I mean, you could. You could be with anyone, but probably like to. You never know. Like opposites attract. Um. Also, fourth house moons tend to move around a lot. Um. Maybe not like country, but like you know they like to. They're not afraid, and you you have a, a trine with Uranus, so it would make it like a a good thing. Like it's not like something that's like a difficult. Like you're forced to do. It's like you're just like I want to move here. Um. So. It's also really good to for fourth house moon to um live by water. You Missouri. I don't know if you're, you're in St. Louis. I think there's a river there. Uh, and that can really be be very healing. Uh, very, very healing. Also, even like um fourth house moon could 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 do very well in business and real estate. Um, okay, talk about this, talk about that. Yeah, also the series in Virgo likes to, just likes to, yeah, like uh perfect like perfect them their skills and, and help other people perfect their skills and you know, likes to be of service, feels nurtured when they're when they're they they nurture by being of service. So yeah. And I think another thing about Juno and Sag partnership wise is like, you know, in the eighth house, it's like that real emotional intensity in your relationships, but like not where that gets like toxic. And, um, you know, just like with Sag, just like a common belief system, you know, it doesn't have to be exact, but just someone who's open minded where you're also, yeah, like very free, like kind of explore the world together and explore different ideas and feed off each other. It's so important. Um, so yeah, one key part of your chart is defining the values it's like a constitution of you defining that um, and then speaking about it. Okay, let's see here. Just looking at one thing. Yeah. Didn't see any out of bounds plants. Um, okay, so let's. Hmm. So the sun moon midpoint for you falls right on your Chiron, which is super interesting. Um, it's also, you know, Chiron is conjunct Aldebaran, but, um, you know, Chiron being, uh, you know, 
there's not much information on on that. Um, I can check, but I highly doubt that I'll find anything about that. Why is my computer not charging? I'm having charge like charger problems with like all my devices. It's so weird. Like what the heck? It's plugged in. And stay away. Okay. Okay, let's just save it. Yeah, there ain't anything. But yeah, the summit midpoint on your Chiron just speaks about how like the coming together of your personality essentially is through you becoming a healer. You becoming that wounded healer, you you going through the healing journey and then being being someone who can um bring value to people's lives through the value system you create in your own life. Um, and your own healing journey being inspiring, karmic healing. All right. So anything else? Uh, I don't see much. Nope. 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 I already talked about that. 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 So Jupiter's like close-ish to some really important asteroids. I mean, Amor is just like the most amazing asteroid. It's about like unconditional love. So to have Jupiter there, uh, you know, it is like five degrees away. And then it's also like four and a half degrees from Fomalhaut, which is like the world star of like the vine. Um, inspiration, creativity, and, and just so intuitive and artistic. But yeah, I mean, it's just it's just more gifts, you know. More gifts. And then a more yeah yeah like a more yeah it's uh just. Yeah, just gives you that unconditional love for for all that is and Eris uh, on Venus, and you have Urania on Venus, close to Venus, which is the astrology. So that's the astrology in the twelfth house. So you could be meant to be an astrologer, or like that could be like a career for you. Um, very interesting. With Eris, um, it's more kind of volcanic energy, right? And let's look at one other thing.
I have no idea what asteroid Isis represents. I'm just being honest. Wait, this is the wrong list. But I mean, I would assume that it would speak to um, energy of Isis and it's right on your midheaven. Um, Let's see. No, oh, I found something. So it talks about like, like how writers and strategists would have this people who can uh, collate disparate that's this who can collate dis disparate information and breathe new life into it. Um. Those who have a career in the occult and astrology would find Isis very useful to have in their charts because of the strong Mercury and the ability to, to divine a coherent message from many different symbols. Isis probably carries with it some chance of fame, judging by the amount of stars she has promising renown. Success in writings, and certainly, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, magic and fertility and motherhood. Also the protector of dead and devoted wives. So there's this theme about like breathing new life to things that are kind of dead. Um, like, like kind of this magical ability that can be like very prominent in your career. It's also about re resurrection, reassembling, remembering. Ooh. So you could have some connection to ISIS. Maybe because there used to be like, you know, cult, like uh, spiritual cults back in ancient Egypt and whatnot. So. interesting all right well that is it um how long did i go two hours exactly well i had a nice roll of like one or two that was like 130 but thank you um let me know about about the other uh the other reading like i said nearly everyone does it it's super amazing to talk live um we just find a date and time um whenever you're ready if you want to do it zero pressure um, these allergies are just destroying me and i want to scratch my eyes but it just makes it more red all right thank you so much and um talk soon and thank you so much for being patient all right